Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today I'm going to show you guys how to jailbreak iOS 8.1.2 fully untethered on any iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad, completely native on Mac OS X or OS X using a new tool dubbed PP or PP Ghost. All right, so getting started, as I mentioned before the intro, this tutorial will be for Mac OS X or OS X users. So if you don't own a Mac, then just be sure to check out my untethered G jailbreak tutorial. And I will have that link to on the screen now via an annotation form. So just view this video on desktop so that you can click set annotation. Also, I wanted to say that there are quite a few things I need to mention and get out of the way to ensure a successful jailbreak. So if you feel like you're more proficient in jailbreaking or you're one of my regular viewers and you kind of know the drill by now. There will also be annotations down below at the bottom for certain segments of this video that you can go ahead and click to actually skip ahead. So again, another reason to ensure you watch this video on desktop. And now let's go over supported devices. The all new PP Ghost or PP Jailbreak utility includes support for the iPhone 6, iPhone 6 Plus, iPhone 5S, iPhone 5C, iPhone 5, iPhone 4S, the fifth generation iPod Touch, which is what I'm going to be using to demonstrate with in today's tutorial, the iPad Air 2 and iPad Mini 3, the original iPad Air, the iPad Mini 2 with Retina Display, the original iPad Mini, the fourth generation iPad, the third generation iPad, and the iPad 2. Now let's get into the very important pre-jailbreak aspects. So if you updated your device to the current firmware that it's running via Apple's over-the-air OTA update option, meaning you went inside of the settings app, general, and you went to software update, and you updated via this method, you will most definitely encounter issues either during the jailbreak or after post jailbreak. So if that's the case for you, you will actually need to restore your device. And it's very simple. All you have to do is actually just plug into your computer via USB cable, launch iTunes, create a backup, restore to iOS 8.1.2, provided 8.1.2 is still being signed by Apple and it's the latest public firmware. If a new firmware comes out that does indeed patch the jailbreak, then definitely don't update and you'll just have to live with the complications that an OTA or over-the-air update does cause. Anyway, once you've restored to 8.1.2, then you can fully jailbreak using PP on Mac OS X or TIG on Windows if you do happen to have a Windows computer, and then restore from your backup. So once you're completely jailbroken and you have City and it's reorganized the file system, so meaning you followed this video in its entirety, then you can plug back into your computer and then restore from your backup to retrieve all of your data back onto your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. Now, you will also need to sign out of Find My iPhone, but stay logged into iCloud. That's how it will actually recognize that the Find My iPhone feature is indeed turned off. So take the time to do that now. And because I'm not logged into the iCloud portion of the settings app, I'm going to go ahead and fill out my information here, and I'm going to be right back. Okay, and now that I'm logged in, as you can see down below at the bottom, it says that Find My iPod Touch is disabled. Now this will vary for you based on your device. If you have an iPhone, it'll say find my iPhone, iPod Touch, find my iPod Touch, iPad, find my iPad. But as long as you turn that feature off, it's down below at the bottom inside of the iCloud portion of the settings app, then you will be good to go. You can re-enable it later, but just ensure that it is turned off so that the jailbreak does function. Otherwise, it won't proceed as it should. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back and we're also going to disable something else as well. So just above the iCloud settings, you will see an option for passcode. Go ahead and go into it and completely turn it off. As you can see, it gives me the option to turn passcode on, that's because I currently have it disabled. You will need to disable it for the jailbreak. Again, like Find My iPhone or Find My iDevice, you can re-enable it after you're successfully jailbroken. All right, and two more quick things. While we're inside of the settings app, just go to general and then scroll down until you find auto lock and set it to never. Because toward the end of this tutorial, when we have Cydia reorganize the file system, if your device automatically locks, it could force you into actually having to perform a complete restore. And we don't want that. So again, just set auto lock to never. And then once you're jailbroken, you can set it back to your default preference. Now let's go ahead and go back here. And I'm also going to show you guys that this iPod Touch is indeed running iOS 8.1.2. 
All right, so down below at the bottom for the version, you will notice that this iPod Touch does indeed confirm that it is running iOS 8.1.2. Now let's go ahead and get started. Now you're going to need to have the latest version of iTunes installed on your computer. So if you haven't updated in a while, ensure that you launch the Mac App Store, check for updates, and confirm that iTunes is at its latest version. Then from there, you're going to need to download the PP Jailbreak Utility, and I will have a post down below in the more info on Best Tech Info that contains a download link for PP Ghost or the PP Utility. Now with that said, you might not actually be able to open PP based off of your security preferences. So go ahead and launch System Preferences, and then go inside of Security and Privacy at the top, and confirm that down below at the bottom under the Allow Apps Downloaded From section, you have Anywhere checked. To make modifications, if you have Allow for Mac App Store or Allow for Mac App Store and Identified Developers checked, you will need to click on this lock icon down below at the bottom to again unlock and make changes. From there, just set it to anywhere and you'll be good to go. Now let's go ahead and mount the jailbreak utility simply by double clicking on the file we receive once we download it. All right, and as you can see, we have a new window asking us to move it to our applications. That's fine, we can go ahead and uninstall it later, so just move it over and confirm if you need to. And then from there, go inside of Applications and Launch PP. Once you do, you will receive the security prompt, and that's fine, provided you set the right settings inside of System Preferences. All you have to do is just click on Open, and it will open for you. Now, while this is open, I'm just going to leave it up in the background, and we're going to open up iTunes too, because we need to plug our iDevice into our computer and ensure that it successfully recognizes the device. So I have my iPod Touch 5th generation plugged in here and I'm waiting for iTunes to recognize it. As you can see, it does bring it up there at the top, so we're good to go. If you need to trust the connection, you will receive a prompt on both your computer as well as your device. The device will say that it needs to verify the connection, so all you have to do is tap on trust and on the computer you just have to click on continue. Now that iTunes has successfully recognized it, we can close out of iTunes. We're done with it from there. Ensure that iTunes is fully closed out too. So just go ahead and right click it in the dock and click on quit if it is still open. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm my quit there and we're going to continue. If you freshly restored your device, you'll also have to set it up as a new device before you restore from your backup at the end of this jailbreak tutorial. That's just so PP functions as it should. And now with that said, we're finally ready to proceed with the jailbreak tutorial. Everything that I've mentioned up until this point has been absolutely crucial. So if you encounter any issues with the jailbreak, ensure that you rewatch this video in its entirety because I can guarantee the success of your jailbreak if you do. Now let's go ahead and uncheck this box at the bottom left because it just installs a third party Chinese distribution platform that we are not interested in at all. All we really want is Cydia for our jailbreak. Now let's go ahead and click this button up at the top to go ahead and continue. The interface will be foreign, but down below at the bottom it does say iPod Touch 5G iOS 8.1.2. We're good to go. Let's go ahead and click this button again to go ahead and continue with our jailbreak. And now it's just telling us what I've mentioned up until this point about turning off Find My iPhone and Touch ID. Let's go ahead and continue now. And it is proceeding with the jailbreak. I'm actually going to leave the iPod Touch up on the display here throughout the duration of the process so you guys can see approximately how long it should take. We do have some written prompts down below at PP, but again, just refer to the progress bar and refrain from interfacing with your device at all, meaning definitely don't unplug it, don't touch the power, lock, home, or volume buttons. and inside of PP itself, it moved from step six to step seven, and it should be done shortly. We are just waiting on the jailbreak to finish processing, and once it does, we will be good to go. As you can see, we have a green check mark, and the iPod Touch is rebooting. So we are successfully jailbroken. Let's go ahead and just wait for it to reboot. Again, don't unplug it, even though we are done. We just want to ensure that everything functions as it should.
All right, here we go. It should be coming up shortly. And once we're at the lock screen, we can go ahead and slide to unlock. As you can see, iTunes has already recognized it. And let's go ahead and wait for it. All right, so as you can see, there we go. Let's go ahead and slide to unlock now and scroll over and we should have Cydia. As you can see, there it is. I'm going to take this time to actually close out of iTunes as well as PP and unplug the iPod Touch here. And then we're going to go ahead and open up Cydia. And as I mentioned before, ensure that you do not have auto lock checked because if you do inside of the settings app on your device, then you will encounter issues if it automatically locks during the reorganizing file system process and also ensure that you do have an active connection. If you decided to enter airplane mode prior to jailbreaking, which is recommended by the way, based on your device, if you do encounter issues, again, just entering airplane mode prior to actually jailbreaking, then go ahead and turn off airplane mode now and reestablish an active data connection. Okay, and let's go ahead and just open up Cydia right now. And like I said, it will reorganize this file system. Do not exit out of Cydia, do not lock your device and do not reboot it. This is paramount because if you do, then it will definitely cause issues forcing you to restore your device. So I'm just going to leave it up on the screen here so you guys can see approximately how long the process of preparing the file system should take. But again, it will vary based on your device as well as how much data is actually on it. So just go ahead and wait for this to proceed and wait for it to continue. Once it is done, you will see an Apple logo that is because your device is respringing. It won't take the full amount of time that it normally takes for a reboot, but let's go ahead and wait for that and you'll see what I mean. All right, there we go. We do have the Apple logo. That is because it did respring. And like I said before, it won't take the same amount of time that a normal reboot takes because it's just restarting the springboard. So once it is done, we will be at the lock screen. Let's go ahead and slide to unlock and scroll over, open up Cydia, and it will load as you'd normally expect it to. So let's go ahead and wait for that. And once it is done, I'm going to actually scroll down to the bottom and show you guys that Cydia does indeed confirm that this is a fifth generation iPod Touch running iOS 8.1.2 and once it's done refreshing down below at the bottom there, it will reload the data and we may have an update or two. If that's the case for you, then you will need to install set updates prior to actually installing anything else on your device. So as you can see, I do have one update. So go ahead and install that at this point. I'm going to show you guys that this iPod is on 8.1.2 though. All right, so down below at the bottom, Cydia says that this is an iPod 5.1 or fifth generation iPod Touch running iOS 8.1.2 with Cydia 1.1.16. Now let's go ahead and go to the changes section. I'm actually going to install the update and just show you guys that everything does function and we can actually install a Cydia package. So this is just an update that is required after jailbreaking. So let's go ahead and wait for this to complete. And once it does, we should just have to return to Cydia. So let's go ahead and wait for that. All right, so as you can see down below at the bottom, it now says return to Cydia and it has successfully installed it. All right, guys, so that wraps up this untethered jailbreak tutorial using the new PP Ghost utility. I hope you guys liked it and I hope it helped you jailbreak. Again, if you encountered any issues along the way, be sure to rewatch this video in its entirety as I can guarantee that you will successfully jailbreak on Mac OS X or OS X. Now, with that said, if you liked it and if I did help you jailbreak, be sure to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. And if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos covering various things, such as jailbreak tutorials like this one, or even the forthcoming Apple Watch, just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.